Hello and welcome back to Ghost Hunter, for the second half of the mansion level. This is a particularly interesting area, because the save file is called Swamp Mansion Weird, while the previous one was Swamp Mansion Evil. We are about to see precisely why it's called Weird. You see, now this mansion is less real, but it's more true, if you get what I'm coming at when it comes to the peeling back the layers of reality, as I mentioned in the last video. This is kind of the core of the mansion, the true face of it. And here we have, already have a teddy bear after us, but an interesting feature about these teddy bears in this half of level is this. The grenades don't work. Where have we seen that before? They also appear to be unarmed, which is interesting. There's no girls that they're using to beat you with. And that was a familiar sound. Yeah, these teddy bears are actually astral projections. Who's projecting them? I guess that we'll find out. But it seems to imply that we have an alpha teddy bear on our hands. So first of all, we'll head down here for uh, see if we need any health, but also just to take a look at the uh, butchered meat and everything like that. It's pretty neat. I quite like the music uh, in this area. One thing I especially like with this game is the way the music builds. Uh, it always starts off with a basic baseline, and as you advance through the level, uh, or through a fight, it more layers get added to it, uh, to make a much more complex theme by the end of the level. I can't call if this theme itself does it, but I know it definitely happens in the school, because you start with the simple chord progression, the dun, 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 and then it adds the other layers on top of it as you're leaving the basement. And also an interesting symbolic thing here is the children, all the dolls, basically mounted into the walls. Uh, because the uh, children here uh, are kind of part of the house themselves, so it's kind of symbolizing the fact that these children cannot escape this place. They are a part of the swamp now, and will never escape it. We'll see more explicit symbolism about that later, and uh, when we get some more information I'll explain exactly what that means. I still quite like that music box room, especially because it's something that actually has stuff in it. And now we have two teddy bears to contend with. Luckily they don't really notice us straight away, so let's just shoot them in the back with a shotgun and try and just take them out fairly sharpish. But I don't want to be dealing with two teddy bears. There we go. Yeah, because they're actual, they also feel a little less real as well. They are this now; they are kind of see-through. And yeah, this door is actually missing now. So let's check out the bathroom and see what lies in there before we advance. Because last time there was stuff in it, so that's nice. Just making sure there weren't any enemies I hadn't noticed. And yeah, this room is now completely empty except for the plants. But this is what I mean by the track adding to it, this backwards part wasn't quite there before in the same way, and that weird bubbly sound in the background too. It definitely because it gives a good sense of progression that we're now halfway through this part of the level. So let's head through here. Cape seems a lot more prominent. We have a puzzle on our hands, and the girl who appears to be specifically imprisoned here, unlike the others, for some interesting reason. Again, we will find out. So let's first of all head to the left, well, right going in, but left now, into the basement. And we will do the first part of this somewhat elaborate and interesting puzzle. We need to make stars shine in the sky, so how will we do that? Oh, we'll have to explore the one route we can, and oh my god. <laughs> this is what I meant by more explicit symbolism here. These dolls, uh, the roots in the uh, connecting them to the building itself are in a similar position as to kind of an umbilical cord. 
implying that this house has basically become an inexplicable part of their lives, one that they can't extricate themselves from, ever. They are uh, now permanently part of the mansion. And now we have two teddy bears to contend with, but much like that uh, first weird tornado ghost kid, we can just take these out from the stairs and they can't do anything about us. I always like when the game gives you that option. It makes it feel clever, even if it's just the game being kind of stupid. And the teddy bear's completely ruled, they have no idea where we are. And now he's gone, and he's dropped something, so let's pick that up and see what we can bring out of that once we've replenished our ammo. Kind of... The lens? The torch? Let's see what it does. Stars! We have our first piece of the puzzle, but let's see what's in this room now. See what lies beyond here. Um... You okay? Yeah, I'd actually forgotten about this. This is a really cool scare that I really liked when I was recording the game. Um, when I first came across it in the first place of this game, it was really cool as well. This is the true nature of Lady de Montfort. Yeah, she's dead. She has been this whole time. I quite like that room because the music completely dies and all you hear is that rocking chair. It's wonderfully creepy. It's, it's kind of... I, I liken it to the uh, giant Eileen's face in Resident Evil... in Silent Hill, rather, 4, in the Asylum level or prison, whichever one it was. Where you go into that one room, go further enough in, and all of a sudden the camera snaps to a full shot of Eileen's massive face staring at you. It's a similar thing to that, but done way before it in a very interesting way. Because you have no real reason to go into that room anymore. So let's make the stars shine in the sky. What fires your dreams unlocks my death. The date I took my final breath. So yeah, this area actually has very few actual characters. Again, these teddy bears we've been fighting are mostly actual projections. I think we can all guess who's projecting them. And we've already we've also met the real Lady de Montfort as well. That's a large amount of the cast of this area's past. It appears we have found the core of the madness, the signature event that caused everything. So let's find out when she died and how she died, see if we can start putting it all together. I've been to hell. I've never seen heaven. The number you need is 87. 87. And luckily, you don't really have to put these numbers together yourself, because dates can be a little vague like that when it comes to month versus day at times. So, I'm happily he puts it together for you. So let's go through this slideshow. A picture of the house. A girl being menaced by a crocodile. Where have we heard that before? And a girl writing on a wall. You may have noticed. And now, yes, the uh, girl's now coming out of the house to meet us. So I get a better look at that. Yeah, the, this. We're seeing the original girl, the hillbilly girl that uh, the Dewan Ford's son tried to rescue from Old Croc. As you can tell, he didn't succeed. And now that we've found that out, she's spawned a couple of extra bears for us to fight. Yeah, remembering that Dewan Ford uh, herself blames the hillbilly's daughter for her son's death because she thought he'd they put her there on purpose to lure him to his death in her madness. Uh, yeah, she has kind of trapped her within this house as almost kind of a uh, deranged version of karma. She is the one projecting these bears. 
But now that we've taken them out, once we've replenished a few resources, we will find that one of them has again dropped something. Another new lens. Again for a flashlight, which is a bit weird, but because it doesn't look like a lens for a flashlight, because it looks like a magnifying glass, but let's... Okay, it's a black light. Let's see what we can find with this UV light. About what you'd normally find. Blood. This can be kind of finicky, finding out the exact angle before Isaac... Lazarus, I keep doing this, picks up on the fact that the number is 10. It's 10, it's right there, it's 10. The big one, you can't see it really, it's right there, ten. look, 10. 10, yes, you got it, finally, 10. 10th November 1987. Couple of weeks, that's why I was born that. <laughs> so now let's meet her properly. And yeah, this, you may have noticed this one actually has a girl with her, that's because this is the real deal now. We are fighting all that's left of the uh, hillbilly girl that started this whole uh, charade in the first place. The one that uh, indirectly caused David's death and his mother's madness, which eventually caused the town's demise. You see, these enemies do have a name beyond teddy bears and little boys. They are called the Children of Oakvale. The sons of Oakvale, the tornado at you, and the daughters of Oakvale who attack you via the teddy bears. So from that we can surmise that, and also from that town meeting where it was mentioned that a town without children cannot survive as they were fleeing the place. Yeah, we found the real reason that Oakville uh, went under, that Oakville was flooded. Lady de Montfort, uh, it's mentioned in the Beast Theory, uh, she actually killed herself after her son died, that's why she's dead. And when after she did that, it seems like her ghost went and visited Oakville for a kind of deranged form of revenge, where she murdered and enslaved all of their children and forced them to uh, stay in her mansion for eternity as a uh, penance for, uh, well, her perceived penance for her uh, son's death. So yeah, she's completely gone off the rails and the reason that girl was put in was slightly so that no one would talk about it anymore and it would just sweep it under the rug because who wants to remember something like that? And yeah, I've kind of closed over people with a lot of new power for Astral, the power to use these green warp points don't really use it much, but it's nice to have it. I think it comes up a little later in the game, but not much, really. It's barely a thing. But now we can get to the attic properly of this part of the mansion. Let's see what we find in here. If Lazarus will get up this fucking step. Yeah, he seems to have trouble when you're in aiming mode. I don't know why. His feet just don't work properly. to find our quarry. This way. We have found the hillbilly's daughter. So let's escape with her, because she seems to know the way out of the mansion. This part's fairly chill, it's just following a small child through a dilapidated mansion. But yeah, I quite like the plot of this area because it's got multiple little twists like that. It's uh, one of the definitely one of the darker subplots in the game, and it's definitely a fairly interesting one. I quite like the characters involved, and uh, I quite like the fact that the areas do do that. They each have a fairly intricate plot as to how they got where they are and how the characters interact with each other. So let us escape the mansion properly now. Let's see what we find beyond the veil. Put the gun down and step back. They've stolen all I ever had. Don't like losing their own precious things, though. Oh no. Always trying to run away, aren't you, little tree girl? Born to misbehave. <laughs> 
Demonic animals. Hardly fit to live. Final warning! Gun down now! And there we have it, the one fold is dealt with and we have rescued our child. So, in the next one we will follow her back to her family and finish off the swamp. What could possibly go wrong? I'll see you then. Uh, I'll see you soon. Goodbye.